we have too many deer and they're like, we have a declining hunter population. That's because it's 250 bucks to go. I think we're kind of behind the eight ball on the fact that a lot of government doesn't want to put money towards you know, natural resources if it's not you know, like building an electric car. Hunting is a tribal activity. We're a tribe. We have lost the tribe. We can't even hunt together anymore, right? Because you didn't pull your tag or I'm hunting on my property, you're hunting on your property. So I think a lot of the problem is like people will, they're waiting to kill the bucks instead of taking out the does and not managing the herd properly. You know, one thing I think that we should implement is a size limit. We own a circus company. And so I'm around some, you know, what I used to would have called strange folks, but now like they see us eating deer. Okay, like you don't know what I'm doing, but then I can explain it to them why I'm doing it. You can't knock something till you try it. You can't be against hunting until you've gone out there and experienced it. Hey guys, this is Ali Spica. This is Jacob Herman. This is Dr. Brooks Tiller, and you're listening to Living Country in the City. Y'all ready for your dose of flyover state spirit? Straight from the concrete jungle? Well, put down your latte and pull on your boots. It's time for Living Country in the City. Hey y'all, welcome to episode 110 of Living Country in the City. Before we get started, a big thank you to Sawyer Products for their continual support of the podcast. Make sure y'all head on over to Sawyer.com. Sawyer makes really some amazing products that I guarantee you will need this summer. They are a household name for a reason. They make some of the most reliable insect repellent, sunscreens, water filtration systems. Y'all, this stuff is great for your hunts, it's great for your scouting trips, and it is great for your family vacations. So, Make sure y'all head on over to Sawyer.com. Check out all the amazing products that will help keep you and your family safe in the outdoors this summer. Also, y'all, just a reminder, if you are looking to start a podcast or you need a website for your brand or just generally looking to upgrade your current site, make sure y'all hit me up on the website, livingcountryinthecity.com. Hit that website design tab or just go straight to livingcountryinthecity.com slash website hyphen design. On that page, you can find a selection of the web work I've done for various different companies. You can also find a quote request form. Send that in. I'll hit you up. We can set up a time for a call to really detail what you're looking for, and I can get you a quote to really put together a website that you will be happy with. So y'all make sure you head on over to the website, hit that website design tab. All right, y'all, now for today's episode. If you have not listened to episode 109 yet, make sure you head on back Give a listen to episode 109 because this is part two. After the POMA conference, I went out to Nashville, hung out with my buddies Jacob Herman, Ali Spica, and Dr. Brooks Tiller. The last episode was a great one on functional fitness for the outdoors. This is the continuance of that conversation as we get into a more direct hunting-related topic, and we really talk about a lot of the pluses and minuses of going hunting. So y'all, I hope you enjoy part two of this two-part series, episode 110 with Jacob Herman, Dr. Brooks Teller, and Ali Spica. So we are back. Um, <laughs> I'm dying right now. Um, so I do, I do want to address something, something you mentioned, you know, something we talked about earlier. Um, you know, and this is something I feel like a lot of people encounter, people, uh, whether, you know, someone like myself from California to where some of these bigger hunts, it's going to be years before I draw it because there's so much competition. So I have to go out as like for an elk hunt. It's going to be years before I can draw an elk. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm looking at going out of state, uh, you know, and, uh, lots of stuff like that. And, you know, you're, you have the same sentiment. I feel like that a lot of people have is just that. Hunting is too expensive. Pain in the ass. Right. It's pain in the ass because it's too expensive. Uh, You know, so it's one thing. There are only X amount of bighorn sheep, right? There's only so many grizzlies you can take uh, in an ecological manner. But, like, I travel a lot, right? And um, I've never shot a duck, right? I I talked about that earlier. Because, like, when I'm in wherever, they're like, man, we're going to go duck hunt tomorrow. And I'm, like, looking at it, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be in this state once during season, Right. Uh, I got to buy an out-of-state hunting license. I've got to buy whatever. Then on top of that, you buy the base license. 
So that's probably 150 to $200. Then you've got to buy the migratory bird permit. Then you got to buy the state bird permit. And by the time it's said and done, I've spent $250 to hunt for four hours. Yeah, it's not worth it. And then, you know, I've, it's the same place with like deer or um, even here in Tennessee. If you are, if you don't, if you're not, if you moved here or like granddad sold the farm or whatever, and you've got to hunt somewhere else or hunt on public land, you know, it's a couple of hundred dollars. Um to to get a in-state hunting license and that's that's bullshit right like if a guy the re, like we stand around we're like we got to get more people interested in hunting and we've got declining hunting numbers the less licenses were sold well less licenses were sold because the guy that gets to go two weekends in a row and he's on a budget he's not going to buy a 225 dollars worth of licenses from his state to hunt on his friend's property where he may hunt two weekends, he might get to kill a deer. Yeah, I, I think one way to do that is maybe expand the the landowner's part. So if you have, if you actually have land, you can hunt for free. You can in Tennessee. Yeah, you know, but but then again, you have to have land. But right, right. You, it can't be land that you leased. Right. It has to be yeah. your your land or you know or your land or your dad's land or your within the family. Yeah, trust. it has to be right. like, yeah, and. You know, and and so I, you know, that may be one thing, just off the top I mean, of my head, is one tail. way. You know, it's like, well, if, if it was like a landowner, if you had a right. landowner tag, um, but maybe if it was like the landowners could allow, you know, the landowner can allow like, you know, family and X amount of people right. to hunt that property. That that it's might a help a little thing. Bit. I mean, you know, if you look in the state of Tennessee, which I grew up here, and my um, I, my my grandpa had the largest big game checking station in the state, and I remember on opening day you'd have a couple of hundred deer checked in. Well, on opening day now, even in rural area, you don't have that many. Now a lot of people are going back to hunting on their land; they don't even take the deer, right? You can get on YouTube. It's you know it takes. Then you spend two hundred fifty bucks, and you got to spend one hundred and fifty two hundred dollars processing it, right? It's expensive. You're talking about a five hundred dollar day. If you kill a deer now, a lot of people are in the process, their process it their self, but I mean, you've got to look there. If you go out West, like in Montana, you can kill one deer, right? You can kill a white tail or a mule deer, but you just get one in Tennessee in DeKalb County. I can kill like 12 deer. There's a, there's sections here. You can kill an antlerless deer every day. Yeah. Right. We have too many deer and they're like, we have a declining hunter population. Yeah, that's because it's two hundred and fifty bucks to go. Is it, it, when you're in the east and you're talking about whitetail, and there are whitetail every everywhere. We have whitetail downtown Nashville. We have an exploding, an uncontrolled whitetail population. You go to like Central Park in New York, right? I mean, it shouldn't cost over twenty five bucks to get a hunting license. You should be able to hunt a whitetail deer for one year or fish in the lakes in Tennessee for twenty five bucks. And it var- I mean, it varies from state to state too. Like, and that's you know, and it. Well, my that may not be the experience for other people, but yeah, it's it. It is gener- severe, It is generally you know, Tennessee. My tag, for my like, elk tag for Montana, my combination tag oh, yeah. is like over a thousand dollars. Well, that's also Montana, like the Western states. Montana yeah, is probably the most expensive one to hunt as a non-resident. But additionally, with that tag, you have more opportunity than any of the other states. Because with Montana, I can go if I go in archery season on my tag on my general tag. I don't get something, I can then go back for muzzleloader. I can go back for rifle. I can go back in, in the late season. I get That tag gets me the whole year versus like an over-the-counter tag in Idaho that I buy that is literally for that you know month, uh, those four weeks in September that that hunt season's open. But I'm and just going to look on. Yeah. I'm just going to look on. I mean, I think it's like 1200 bucks for the, for the non-resident license. That's the license. And then additionally, there's additional on top of that if you draw – a special permit tag that because i drew i drew montana as well this year too so i you know you buy the license and the license i bought the combo license i think for 1200 bucks ish and that gets you um that allows you to hunt a deer and an elk for, for basically the whole whole hunting season uh fall through winter um and then if you want to if you want to hunt in one of the specific draw units you have to put in then for that tag. There's an additional fee for that, and you know, there's it's a higher percentage chance, but then it's also limited. You can only, you can only hunt with, you know, if you draw a archery tag, you can only hunt with a bow within those seasons, within those units. I mean, you can still hunt 
during the general season on your general tag if you want. Otherwise, if you don't aren't successful there, but um, you know, and then it's different. You know, like you go to Idaho, six hundred bucks. I can you know over the counter. I can hunt. I've got choices of tons of different units. I can hunt. Same with Colorado's around the same price, six hundred bucks. I can I can get a tag. Um, I can go I can go hunt Colorado over the counter. Uh, every state's so different. Um, Texas. I mean, I think one thing that certain states do that is missing from a lot of states is providing limited time tags for that person that wants to come duck hunting for It's because it's a, a revenue weekend. creator. Yeah, well, but, but there's a lot of states that do that. Like, I could go to, like, when I went on my Texas hog hunt, I bought a, I bought a five-day, five-day tag. It was cheap as hell. I was able to go shoot a, you know, I think my question on. is, is it's revenue. And I know, like, and I'm all for, like, putting my money to conservation. You know, so that, right. so that like, that's, like, for me, I want to hunt. I want to pass that on to the next generation. I want, like, the next, you know, my kids and their kids, like, to have it, have better hunting ground than I had. I know my granddad, mm-hmm. there were, I mean, I would talk to him about if they, you know, not even, they didn't hear turkeys. And you like, and I would hear like, "Oh, we heard a turkey." That was something that they heard a turkey. It was like somebody getting a grand slam today. You heard one. Yeah. You know, and, and my granddad told me they went and hunted squirrels and eating possum and gopher and all kind of stuff because they couldn't even find deer. You know, there was very rarely if you kill a deer a year. And you know, and I'm all for the conservation aspect. I think the one thing is is, is one reason that. I think the the tags are that way. I mean, we need the revenue because you need the – you got to have the people there to at least, like, enforce the fact that somebody's not going to go kill 400 deer a year or whatever. Yeah, but they're going to kill them anyway. But, we, we all know people that approach. Right, right but the like, but thing is, is, like, I think we're kind of behind the eight ball on the fact that a lot of government doesn't want to put money towards, you know, natural resources if it's not, you know, like building an electric car. Right. Like you can have, if you put a electric panel on your house, you'll get a tax break. Right. But if you go out and kill your own food, you got to pay extra. Yeah. And I think that, that, and so I see where you're coming from. And I think that that's where, I mean, I mean, here it's, it's something right. else that like, there's something more like where if, if, if everybody's tax dollars, it's all, it's almost like, well, if you want to, you know, if you want to eat. If yeah, but it's not your it's not your tax. If you're not hunting on WMA land, right, and you're hunting on somebody else's property, you are literally just paying for the right to shoot the Keens deer. Actually, it's the difference is is it's not that it's the Kings deer, it's everyone's. Deer. But we have too many deer here. Like they shoot, yeah. they we have like and there are we yeah. have a deer. The problem is we're charging for something mm. that neighborhoods pay pest removal. To come like right, yeah. we're we're inhibiting like we can't stand around and say we have a declining hunter population when we're making the barrier of entry so much. Right. But here's the thing, but you with have the sportsman license. To, with, you, you, I was gonna say you may have to pay, but you have the opportunity to go hunt those. But the other lifetime, places you can't necessarily. You don't even have that opportunity. Right. What opportunity to go hunt a deer? Like in, uh, there's a lot of states where. It'll take you years to get a mule deer tag. We're not talking about mule deer. We're talking I'm, about what? So this I, is once this again. I'm talking saying about earlier. you have the opportunity. This though. is what we were talking about earlier. The difference between Western hunting and Eastern hunting. Yeah. And all everything everybody focuses on, or like you, you never see somebody on Instagram. Like you never see a mountain ops or a, a first light or a whatever sponsored hunter get excited because they bought their hunting license in Tennessee. That right. Uh, you, you see, like, people get super stoked because they drew whatever because it's hard to get, right? Like, I shot my last deer in Tennessee out of the garden with a 9 millimeter, right? Because you, you have to literally not want to kill a deer here. So it's not an opportunity. It's a – you're harvesting an animal to eat it, right? It's not – you're not drawing something that's hard to get. You're not drawing something that we manage literally – hundreds of deer are killed. There are more deer killed on the roads in Tennessee than all the mule deer will be killed in Montana during season. Exactly. Right? So you have the opportunity right, but to do that. We're limiting the barrier to entry. I think one way that they're helping with that is yeah. the lifetime sportsmen. Mm-hmm. If we were in college, you went to college, I went to college, right? You, yeah. If we were in college and I and there was a, like 
kid that lived in the city, right? Like we're, this goes back to the issue of like, we can't say as hunters, we have a declining hunter population. We have to get more people out, right? When we charge so damn much to get people, to get people yeah. in. Like, so if I, like I lived in a frat house and I had fraternity brothers never hunted. Hey man, I'm going hunting this weekend. I'm going on my family property. I'm 45 minutes away. It's not, I don't have to pay anything. You've never been hunting. You're on the fence of whether hunting's good, bad. You hear all these people at school tell you what an awful person you are for owning a gun. Do you want to go hunting? Well, if you look at it, right, it's uh, that kid who, like, already is broke because we're in college. $34 hunting and fishing, right? And then another 34 bucks for a, a gun, or $34 for archery or $34 for muzzleloader. Each season you got to get there. So if you're a resident, you're already 100 whatever sportsman license. When I was in college, I didn't have an extra 100 bucks to go sit in the woods with my buddy. Yeah. It's not how it works. Like I didn't like we're losing during people when we're like supposed to be getting people out, they don't have the 100 bucks to blow to ride home with you on a Friday night sit in the woods Saturday morning. Right? Like we are we are causing our own decline yeah. of and I mean, like the lifetime sports, and where if you're under three, it's like a hundred bucks, and yeah. that's your license for life. I mean, right. my mm-hmm. kids have that, so like they, my, you know, my dad bought that for all his grandkids, so he knows like they've got they've got a license for life. Yeah, and in that case, like you know, talking about that, and I know like there's there's places like QDMA, right? They're doing things where they're going to farmers markets. And like, hey, do you want to try some venison? And they're getting people involved. Why well, shouldn't and, and they be... do it? And they do a crossbow. They right. take people out of a crossbow, early archery season. And I think it's only like they cover everything, and I think the whoever the hunter is, it's like a fifty bucks, and the hunter, you know, like and, and whoever the mentor is, kind of helps provide the camo and stuff like that. But QDMA helps with the helps with everything else, right? You know, just the mentor has to provide the stand and the camo, kind of right. like you know, make sure that you're there, mm-hmm. you got a place, and then you know they and they so that's there's things like that that are. There's lots of other states with that. that have uh, they have like similar mentorship programs where you can, uh, I think it's just you can bring someone out. It's kind of like a, a guest tag. It's I can't remember if it's either free or super cheap, but you can basically bring them out for certain animals, or they don't have to buy a license if they're with a licensed hunter. And there's ways they're trying to remedy. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's. I'm not Why saying not our system is Why not just reduce the fees in, in states like this? Right now, it doesn't work in every state. Like if they said in Montana, you can just come by over the counter tag and go. There'll be we'd go come and kill every mule deer. Yeah, right. Because yeah. everybody wants a big one. You know, I'm, but I, we're I, actually, begging yeah. people to shoot deer here. You can yeah. kill one yeah. every so day. How much is an out of state resident? Out of state here in Tennessee to shoot a deer out of resident. state for you? So. Oh man, See, I've actually got a meeting with TWRA in a couple of weeks, and it's one thing like. Tennessee non-resident about, you know? hunting license. So you're, that's junior. These are kids. Okay, so you get about hundred and eleven dollar. You can hunt all game for two hundred fifteen bucks. Now, on top of that, you got to buy another license if you're hunting public land. So if you're out of state, if you if you if I invite like you if someone wants to go to hunting come with to me, say we're here, mm-hmm. it's filming this in November, and I'm like, hey man, like you're here for twenty four more hours. Let's go to the farm and sit for a deer. My property. Right? Yeah. It's going to cost you 225 bucks to take someone yeah. hunting that's never been before. I think... That's crap. Also, one of the hardest things, too, is since hunting's not, you know, a guaranteed thing, there is a big chance that you could spend all this money yeah. and not, you know, yeah. not we're walk away with an hunting. animal. I, I, it just made me jot down some notes because I've actually got... I'm actually meeting with some of the TURA people in a I have weeks. never seen a wildlife agent in the woods. That's the other thing, right? Really? Like... I've never, because I don't hunt WMA property, but I've hunted all over to Cab County. What's w- WMA County. property? Just Wildlife that. Management Area. Okay. It's our public. Okay. It's our now. The state of Tennessee is great WMAs, right? We have thousands of acres that you, as a as a resident, can hunt on, right? And my my friend Joey Bell, he killed a buck this year, pretty good buck on WMA property, uh, about an hour and a half from here. He he lives in Nashville. He left his house at four and killed a deer, but it is too it is too expensive. It's too expensive for one the single weekend guy, right? Like your what do you call him? Like in, in the, the Alabama, weekend like warrior, your, your football guy that didn't attend the college, right? But he's a fan. Never played football, but he's a fan. You yeah. know? Your and, weekend warrior. Yeah, yeah I, know, right? I know some guys, and they they hunt, and it's they it's like the week of Thanksgiving. Right. They, they hunt the week of Thanksgiving. You know, they're like 
maybe they get – I mean, because our, our big gun season opens the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Okay. So, like, they'll hunt that Saturday, and they'll hunt all the way through, like, the weekend after Thanksgiving. It's, like, their week to hunt. Right. And then they may – they they the gun's clean. They're, they're done for the year. Like, we have wildlife management managing – I, the only interaction I've ever had TWRA officer is on the water. Yeah. Right. It was and, on the water. I mean, like, I went to school. My undergrad is in environmental science. I mentored under a wildlife officer. Um, and that's really what I was going to school for. And. And now you're doc, now, Dr. Tiller. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And the, the <laughs> twists and turns that life takes. But, I, but, it, but it's brought me back to the outdoors and the yeah. wildlife, which is great. In, in my in my training, hanging out with those people, like it, a lot of times you'll have one officer for an entire county. Oh, or more. You know, yeah. like if you got one officer for an, you know, might have one officer for in, a county. Here's the difference. I just looked up. Sorry, in Montana they have five hundred seventy thousand deer, right? Mm-hmm. You think about the size of Montana, Tennessee herd uh, is at nine hundred thousand. Yeah. And we didn't have deer. They didn't put deer back in this state till the 1940s. So there have been deer in Montana forever. They released deer here in 1940s. My great-grandparents had never seen a white-tailed deer. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah, because they almost went extinct. They, they went extinct. So what are the re- what are they saying are the reasons for the giant population? Because people aren't shooting them. Because, like, and, why and, would I go? And so, like, a lot of places you can kill a doe a day. A day per a day. person, and and the thing is, is a lot of people, and I, I'm, we've had this problem. We like where we hunt. Uh, we're out. We we have a piece of property we hunt. I've got a one of my best friends hunts a property, like down the road, a, like across the road from us. Well, the people that are across the like directly across the road from us, like that's a cousin of mine, and like they 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 practice a lot of like, all right, if it's a small buck, we'll let it go. If you just want to kill a deer for meat, we'll kill a doe. We do the same thing. You know, you were like, all right, make sure, you know, it's a bigger buck. Just to let them grow, just to be, you know, like, make sure that we're ha- managing the herd properly. Kill some does. My buddy does the same thing. Well, on this, in this big parcel, if you take that big chunk, there's one parcel of land that's kind of in the middle of the three of us. And they, they you know, there's been a few times my buddy said he, walk, he watched a little six walk by. Now, if you've never killed a buck or if you're a kid or whatever, and that is your trophy, kill it. I don't care. Like, I'm not judging what you're killing. I do not care. But if you've already got two bucks in the freezer and you're just wanting meat, shoot that doe. You know, like, he was like, man, I watched this doe and a buck walk walk right under me, and he let them walk. He's like, man, you know, I'm just not going to shoot them right now. Like, I'm I'm out here. I want. um, He was hunting for a buck. He already had some does in the freezer. He's like, man, I saw a big buck. I'm, I'm waiting on it. Well, he walks, and five minutes later, here's a shot, you know, and they killed the, the, the smaller six. And once again, like if it would have been a kid or if it had been somebody the first time, I don't care what you kill. I don't care. Like yeah. I've killed small bucks in my life, you know, uh, but, um, but I've killed pl- more does than I've ever killed bucks because I'm like, I, they, eat, they eat just the same, sometimes better. Oh, yeah. And, and so, you know, and so whenever you like, – so I think a lot of the problem is like people will – they're waiting to kill the bucks, and they're instead of taking out the does and not managing the herd yeah. properly. And and I, one way to maybe do it, I know in Wisconsin, sometimes they do that earn, earn a buck program. Yeah. You have to kill a doe before you can kill a buck. That's So here they've changed a little bit. Yeah. yeah we've had – the it says right, the crazy part is like when you talk about – this is the difference between Eastern and Western hunting. Uh, in recent years, our wildlife management agency's attention has turned to increasing – and maintaining the doe harvest. We're trying to kill more deer. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So in the 90s, you could kill 11 bucks a season. A single hunter could kill 11 bucks. Yep. Now you can only kill three bucks. And only two per weapon. But you can kill yeah. tons of does. Like, you can, we could fill a tractor. I could fill a tractor trailer with does. Right? And then if you hunt everything, like special areas and stuff, because we're not killing none of them. You know, one thing I think that we should implement is a, is a size limit. Because people, so like, well, there's a huge argument Tennessee Tennessee hunters for them. I got kicked off of it. Um, about I'm not surprised. Um, <laughs> guys are like, well, if I only get to hunt once a year, I'm going to shoot a buck, and that's the thing. They're going to shoot yeah. a spike. You got grown men shooting spikes, and I'm not going to judge somebody else's trophy, right? But yeah, I'd rather shoot a doe than a than a spike, 
right? But like, because we don't have an opportunity to hunt because it is expensive, right? You got guys chasing trophies. And that's where I think that we've taught ourselves that like kind of lost the path of the hunt, right? Like we used yeah. to go with our friends and we used to go for like a big journey. And mm -hmm. that's the only reason I'm going elk hunting. I've never, I've till, till this year, I'd never thought about hunting elk. Yeah. I, right? I, Not my thing. I'm with you. I mean, somebody, a, a good and friend all my of mine, friends are going, mentor yeah. of mine, he's like, man, I would love for you to come hunt with us. And I'm like, and I'm going hunting with a lot of old, like these are some older guys, but they're, they've elk hunted. I'm like, that's just another experience that for me, I'm thinking I get to go in the future. I might could take my dad. I could take my kids. Like, you know, I'm like, whether I kill anything or not, like, I'm not worried about that. I was like, I'm going to learn more. Like, how do you hunt elk? Because I'm going with people who know how to hunt elk. Mm -hmm. Same thing you would like. I mean, so, I, so now I know how people feel that one of them is, I just want to hunt. I just, you know, I've taken people in their first hunt. And so, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like the, I mean, and, and I, when I've taken people in their first hunt, like I've drove to other states so they could hunt in state, but it was still 200 bucks. Right. You know, right. And, and, they, and then, they had, then they had to buy a bow. We've lost the journey. Yeah. Right. I mean, Fred, the, Fred Bear didn't worry about spraying down with dude, his. Dude, the, the videos think, of, what's his name? Oh, man. Uh, the arrow, the East, uh, Easton, the old man Easton, right? Okay. In the, uh, sixties when they opened up big, uh, stone sheep hunting. What's North of Montana. They, ha they don't have big horns Canada? there. It's like in Canada, right? Is it Alberta <laughs> or what's oh, the, like, what's the province North of Montana? Like Calgary Is area? It, so they, they have a big park I there. Think it's opened, I think it's Alberta. They opened up stone sheep hunting. The Canadian government opened hunting in a national park to bring hunters to Canada, right? Yeah. And it shows Easton and his buddies going on the first mountain sheep hunt with bows in this national park in color, in technicolor. And they're all in like their jeans and cowboy boots and red flannel. And you remember those uh, tubular Was this chairs? A, a movie? Yeah, it was a film. They made okay. films. They'd show them at the hunting clubs. And you remember the tubular chairs with the, the yellow, white, and green oh, yeah, mesh? Yeah, yeah. Right, the woven mesh your grandma had? They all had one of those, and they would plop it and sit in it till the sheep came by, right? And they were on a journey, and those guys had the best time, right? And now mm -hmm. we, like, and they all went together. Well, they, people can't get off by themselves, and people are like, well, I'm going to go by myself. Like, hunting is, hunting is a tribal activity. We're a tribe. We have lost the tribe. We can't even hunt together anymore. Yeah. Right, because you didn't pull your tag, or I'm hunting on my property, you're hunting on your property. We're losing our story, and we're losing our tribe while hunting. And I'm going elk hunting because I'm going with my tribe. I I don't really like. I've never like been like I'm gonna be an elk hunter. We'll go with my tribe. Yeah. And I don't think, I think there is some element of that. I don't think it's completely gone. I think there's still a lot of that. Like my whole my whole deer hunt experience. My first my first animal that I like my first tag that I ever filled was my mule deer last year in Arizona. And that whole thing was a story. You had never about, killed a deer before that. Nope. What'd you I'm do when you were a kid, dude? I didn't start hunting until I was like thirty-four. I didn't start even getting interested huh. in it. Like literally, like two years ago was the and, first hunt I went and on. And that's what's so cool about what you're doing with your podcast, all right? Because I went to college. I mean, in high school, I mean, like guys would leave straight from school and go hunting. Like muzzleloader used to open on Monday. Nobody, like most people were Nobody not there. Was in Nobody class was on cool. Monday, yeah. Everybody was either late or sick on Monday. Uh, you know, that muzzleloader <laughs> season opened, right? And, yes. And, uh, you know, so, and that's what, you know, and so growing up with my dad and my granddad, I thought everybody had that. My, all my friends had their dads. That, I mean, it's like, what are you doing on Saturday before Thanksgiving? Like, you go 98% hunting. of yeah. 90% of them were, like, if they didn't have to go out of town for some reason. We had the, like, in yeah. the fourth grade, in our fourth grade annual, they put your deer you killed that year. Yeah. Yep. That was like the thing. Right? Yeah. I like, mean, you know, I remember like, I mean, that like, there'd be, you know, the Saturday after Thanksgiving or even Thanksgiving Day, my granddad, you know, six deer hanging up at his house. And, you know, we're all butchering them up and stuff like that. Like, that's the way I grew up. And so when I got to college and people had never shot a gun or didn't know anything about hunting, I was like, what? Like, I didn't understand. Yeah. And as I've gone on now, like I said, even, you know, with, I mean, I'm around vegans and some other very hippie people, um, you know, because we own a circus company. And so I'm around some, you know, what I used to would have called strange folks. But now, like, they see us eating deer 
and it's, it's interesting that, you know, content was like, now I'm around those kind of people a lot more, which is kind of cool because I'm like, wait a minute, like, okay, like you don't know what I'm doing, but then I can explain it to them of why I'm doing it. So, I mean, it's, it's really, what you're doing is great because we, I mean, I, I, you know, I thought, I thought you grew up and you were born and somebody handed you a gun. Like, you're like, all right, go to the woods, have fun, you know, like, yeah. Well, and I grew up, like, I grew up in a very conservative family. Like, we had no problem with guns. We had no problem with hunting. Uh, you know, I mean, I shoot a shot. I had a little youth bow as a kid that I would go to the park and shoot sometimes. Uh, you know, but it was just one of those things, like, it wasn't our family's thing. And if I'd gone to my parents and I'd said, hey, I want to, you know, learn to deer hunt, they would have been like, okay, well, let's figure it out. We'll take you out. But what did I have to prompt me to do that? Like... You know, especially back then. Now, now the media is a little more widespread, so that message is getting out. But, like, back then, you know, you had to freaking write a pressure? letter to get a VHS tape sent to you. Oh. Was it was that? like peer pressure where I was at. My dad wasn't a hunter. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. None of that oh, yeah. was present around me. Oh, like, but, like, I, in man, in school, in my school, like, when I was a little now kid. Now, surfing, like you, on the other hand, like. Do you surf? Yeah. That's interesting. But uh, I mean, I grew up in Seal Beach, California. Yeah, like, like yeah. it was like a ten minute drive, ten minute uh, drive to the beach at, on a long day. I could ride my bike to the beach, uh, so that was like I always had that pressure. And and to be honest, funny enough, hunting now represents a lot of what surfing did for me back when I lived so close to the ocean because it's it, it was kind of my calming with nature. It was my my focused you know moment. It was kind of what brought everything together for me when I was really into surfing. Um, it had a lot of those same aspects. And, and you know, everyone's got their different things in different areas. But, you know, I felt like pressure, like, why don't you skate? Why don't you surf? That's kind of what my pressure was growing up. I didn't have a community of people that hunted. I'm sure there was probably, I think we our, our neighbor once brought over some venison sausage from a deer he shot. I thought that was pretty cool. I was like the least sentimental. I think I've said this before. I was like the least sentimental kid ever. Uh, my folks came over. They were like, here, try this. I'm like, what is it? They're like, oh, Marty, our neighbor, brought over some venison sausage. I'm like, dear? They're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, Bambi tastes good. Like, I legit, I remember saying that because I was um, least sentimental kid ever. I was not the one that, like, grew up watching Jungle Book thinking, like, we can't kill animals. Um, but, yeah, they, it was just, I didn't have that community. It wasn't prevalent. And so some, like, I had no prompting to go ask them to. I don't know even if I had that prompting, if I would have been interested at the time, just because I didn't have that community. It wasn't, it just wasn't around. And so coming into this, like, you know, I, I came kind of the roundabout way is, uh, you know, I went to a Vegas, you know, gun store for a bachelor party, and I started shooting guns there. And I was like, this is, like, I'd shot a couple of guns before, but I'm like, this is badass. So I went and bought my first gun. In no California. Yeah. Did you get it at Turner's? <laughs> no, I did not. I got it at Martin B. Redding's Martin gun B. Redding's. Store. Yes. In, I know uh, where that's at. In Culver City. Yes. I love yes. that place. With a big gun on, with a big yeah. rifle on the side. Yeah. I bought, we sell them night vision sights. I was there. When was I in California? A couple months ago with Dan Parnell, our sales rep. He drives me around California. There we go. They didn't chase you out with pitchforks? No, they're good people in Martin B. Reddings. Yeah. Good well, Amer at Martin B. Reddings, sorry. There's they, good Americans in there. And, and <laughs> did you, others, did you have to have an escort between the door of Martin B. Reddings and your hotel before they. <laughs> Maybe. Um, but no, like, I, I, I went and bought, God help me. I What'd went, you get? I went and bought a Desert Eagle. <laughs> 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 because that's what, I shot one at the gun store. I was like, this is the most badass thing I've ever You're done. You're that person. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're gonna take a picture for the internet later. Well, I didn't <laughs> uh, for that. Like you're that guy. I didn't. I just didn't know, and it was a cool gun to shoot. I loved it. But then because of that, I started shooting. I got involved yeah. in. You we started shooting it. It's yeah. a lot. It's a big gun. Yeah, a lot of. Well, to be honest, because it's so heavy, it's actually pretty easy to shoot compared to like a, a Saint revolver. The bullets the same is expensive though. Oh yeah, I mean, you're at the time I was paying like a buck fifty a shot. Was it forty four? Uh, forty four. So. In California, you can own the 50 cal, but you can't buy the 50 cal. So you have to – don't ask me. And this was at the time. I don't know what the laws are now. But you could – you would have to buy the 44, and then you'd get the new slide and the new – you know, yeah. you get the conversion kit, and you, could, and you could have the 50 cal. But I never got around to doing that. And I – long story short, I got involved. We've talked about Project Appleseed before. I got involved teaching uh, – shooting there and then teaching that. 
And I'm I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm never gonna shoot this. I like wouldn't shoot this Desert Eagle, but I really wanted an M1 Grand. Did you and get so, the chrome one? Did you get the chrome? Desert no, Eagle? it was a blacked out. Oh. It was the matte blacked out. I didn't watch that many movies. Um, but yeah, so I ended up selling my Desert Eagle for and buying a, a 1911 and a Grand. But through all of that. That's what got me into hunting is because I have to do things with purpose. Whether it's working out, I have to be training. So going, just going to the range and punching paper, it was great when I was learning the skill. But once I felt like I, I had achieved, not you know, far from mastery, but a, 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 co- a, level, a certain level of competence where I could ring the 600-yard steel with iron sights, you know, freaking seven out of eight shots. But um, once you once you shot a gun, you're never going back because it's so fun. Yeah. Did but you enjoy it. Project All Appleseed? All it took it was once. I did. Um, I had I had some complaints about it, but I think it is an incredible way to get people introduced to. I mean, we had people literally that had never touched rifles before come to the line, like they're terrified, and by the end of it, they are like ready to become instructors. You know, like people that were literally crying because they didn't want to touch a rifle, but they knew it was something they needed to get the hell over. Um, and it, it was a great program. Uh, like I said, there's some weird stuff with it. Uh, and I just, I disagree with how some of the stuff ended up being run, but it was great for introducing people to the shooting sports um, because it does it in a very like non-aggressive, low impact way. And it's, you know, you'll be shooting next to like, You'll you'll have like a like a marine veteran on the line. Like these guys would come shoot just because it was a nice refresher to to go through that stuff again. But then you'd have like a ten year old kid and a grandma, and then like this dude that brought his girlfriend because he wanted her to shoot. And then it's really funny when she starts out shooting him because he gets all chesty and thinks he knows everything about shooting. That's my favorite. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I digress. But this introduced me to shooting and because i needed that i needed that next step i needed that purpose behind it i started getting interested in hunting then i picked up a bow and and didn't shoot a rifle for like two and a half years um i I recently picked up another rifle and i've been enjoying it again but i came in like this super roundabout way like but i didn't have anyone then to teach me how to hunt so i uh i just started like googling crap and you know, I, I'd meet a couple of people here and there, and they'd give me little bits and pieces, and it started expanding, and that's why I started the podcast, because I just wanted to share what I was doing and uh, with people, and people were asking me questions, and I'm like, well, I don't know. I'm just kind of figuring it out, making it up as I go along. Um, then, you know, I've gotten the chance since then. Uh, you know, I got a, uh, met a guy at my work who introduced me to a lot of stuff. God, I don't know if I love him or hate him for introducing me to elk hunting because it's just, it, it's taken over my life ever since then. I'm like obsessed with it. And, uh, Wait till you go to wild sheep. Oh, geez. I did. I did take an odd ad this year. Nice. Um, the poor man's, the poor man's sheep. It was a, you, uh, a few people know the story because, uh, it was neither sex tag. It was New Mexico. It was a draw tag. Um, and long story short, uh, too odd out about a high nose width apart. I was using someone else's rifle, so I was struggling with the sights a bit. And uh, they were able to pick them apart. You know, the U, both the U's and the Rams have horns, and it was uh, they 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 had the the spotting scopes out, and they're like, okay, here's the big, you know, here's the big Ram, get it. And so I find I find one. I'm like, I think they're like, is it on a ledge? I'm like, yeah, with the spot of sunlight coming down on it. I'm like, yeah, facing to the right. Did it just look up? Like they're describing it. I'm like, all right, yeah, they're like fire. So I take the shot. Uh, 625 yards across the canyon. I take the shot. They don't say a word. I'm expecting them to be like, oh, hi, or, you know, it's running to the left, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, crap, how bad did I miss this thing? And I, all of a sudden I hear one of them, <clears throat> or that one will do. <laughs> so apparently there just happened to be like two odd ad, one, a ram, the ram and a U. They were literally like facing the exact same way. Some, you know, some rock fell, so they both happened to look up at the same time. It was just a coincidence. I mean, I'm super stoked on this thing, and I'm, I'm, I can see why. Like, I never understood it before. I had zero interest in sheep hunting. But then after this, I'm like, crap. Is that an over-the-counter tag in New Mexico? No, it's a draw tag. Yeah, I, I put in for yeah. the White Sands. I, I put the, in solely I because I was doing a podcast and somebody, like, t- was talking about them. I'm like, what? I have no idea what this thing is. So I Googled it. I was like, that's the coolest freaking thing I've it's ever seen. It's the best, man. It's a lot of – have you been? Oh, man. Uh-huh. It's gnarly. 
but what time are we at? We are yeah. well into it. Uh, well I was into going to it. kind of ask, uh, start, yeah. start shutting it down. One thing I always like to end with, um, you know, maybe you meet something through, you know, some physical therapy stuff you're doing or, or whatever. Maybe you just run into someone you're talking to, whatever, whatever it is. And they come to you and say, you know, I know you do this hunting thing. I've always been interested in it. And, and maybe they are looking at those barriers to entry. They're like, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of money. Uh, you know, I just don't have the experience. Or, you know, maybe it's someone like me that you just run into that's from the, from the city, but they're interested. What, what would you tell them if they came to you and said, I don't know if it's for me. I don't know if this is something I can do. I'm a little too intimidated. Like, how, what encouragement would you give someone like that uh, to get, in, get into the outdoors, get into hunting? I mean, my thoughts on life are I'll try anything at least once. I mean, why not? And like you said, all it takes is just once, and it you can't knock something till you try it. You can't be against hunting until you've gone out there and experienced it and truly understand what it's about. So, like, why wouldn't you give it a shot? Why wouldn't you try it? Why wouldn't you go on the adventure? There you go. Yeah. That, I agree. Yeah, I mean. And the, even just like, right, let's go. You know, let's go do this. And even, you know. Let's go bow fishing. Let's go shoot a hog somewhere. Which side note, bow fishing is one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life. It's yeah. like it's like party hunting. It's, it's come back. It's yeah. the freaking greatest. I've got I've got my bow fishing rig in the back of the truck right now, nice. just because on the off chance that I while I'm out here I could go. But all right, so let's go around the room. Rooks, if people wanted to find you on the interwebs, where can they hunt you down? I'm pretty much uh, Dr. Brooks Tiller across the board, D-R-B-R-O-K-S-T-I-L-L-E-R. So uh, drbrookstiller.com, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff, Dr. Brooks Tiller will get you there. Also have, um, you can, healthyhuntertv.com. I put a lot of videos, things up there. I say a lot. I put the videos that I get finished <laughs> in my crazy life. And then I also have keto in the wild, so low-carb, ketogenic-type recipes, a lot of them feature wild wild game. Some of them are just so easy that a three-year-old kid can do it. So that's kind of uh, where you can find me at. And um, if anybody needs anything, needs some help, getting ready, getting a little bit healthier, and you know you don't want to go down to the gym and do it, and uh, you want somebody who understands what you need to do to be out there running around in the wild, then hit me up, and I'll be glad to help out. All right, Jacob, where are they finding you in night vision? Uh, night vision is nightvision.com. It's fission, if F I S I O N, right? So that we dropped the S. It's, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> it's on Instagram, the Facebook. Um, I'm on Instagram. It's R Jacob Herman, and I'm on Facebook. It's pretty easy to find. Um, that's it. Make sure you go leave a very polite comment on his Instagram. Oh man, we have some. We had a thing the other day. It had like 600 comments on it. Nice, right? So I post a lot of like, um, you know, I love Africa and love hunting in Africa. So there's a lot of discussion about that. And I'm rabidly pro-gun. And so we have some very uh, heated discussion with people that don't like guns. There you go. Yep. Go check that out. All right, Allie. Is this where I say my my nickname in college? My yes, you can, my, you can talk about that now. So my name is Allie Spika. And Spika is S-P-I-K-A, which is kind of hard to pronounce. And in college, um, you know, everyone knows what Pokemon are. There's a Pikachu. So in college, my nickname became Allie Spikachu. And uh, somehow that stuck. So my Instagram name is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's A-L-I Allie Spikachu, S-P-I-K-A. And then C-H-U for Spikachu. All right, well, I will link to all of those on the show notes page for this episode when I get that up. But, all right, y'all, thank you so much for hopping on. All right, y'all, that'll do it for episode 110 of Living Country in the City. A big thank you to Allie Jacob and Dr. Brooks for sitting down with me. I know that was a bit of a marathon podcast, and uh, we had a really good time talking. Head on over to the show notes page at livingcountryinthecity.com slash 110. Check out everything we talked about in today's episode.
Also, make sure y'all head on over to Sawyer.com. Check out all the amazing products that will help keep you and your family safe from ticks, mosquitoes, and the sun this summer. Finally, y'all head on over to livingcountryinthecity.com. Hit that website design tab. If you are looking to create a podcast or start your web presence, we will get you all set up in a brand new website. But in the meantime, keep it country, y'all. Thank y'all for listening to Living Country in the City. Get show notes and check out the blog, product reviews, events, and more at livingcountryinthecity.com.